Hello, welcome back to our bookshop in Tree. I'm Ben Morehouse. So we've got another author interview on today. We're talking to uh, Helly Acton. She's a debut novelist with this rather wonderful book, The Shelf, uh, which um, I have to say, uh, I couldn't put it down. It's such a brilliant book. And I had the pleasure of chatting to her uh, only earlier today. So I hope you enjoy. Hello, Helly. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. How are you doing? And thank you for having me here. Oh, no, absolutely brilliant. It's an absolute honour to, uh, I've absolutely loved, I mean, I'm showing a copy of um, your proof rather than uh, an actual copy. I can see your, your real, um, the real <laughs> copies up there looking beautiful. <laughs> wow, it must have, must be a dream, um, having published your first book, the whole experience. Oh, t I'm totally stunned to be honest because, um, you know, before this I had zero experience of the book industry apart from being a, a reader, of course, but um, uh, yeah, because no, I didn't go to literature, I didn't get a literature degree or I didn't go to writing school, but I've always been a big daydreamer and then I had this idea um, and I decided that it was fun and I wanted to explore it on paper. Then I gave it a go and all of this has happened. So completely unexpected, but such a thrill. Fantastic. And, yeah. fantastic. and, the, and the, the process, and we will we'll come back to the book, but the process of, um, of getting published, you know, you've got yourself a manuscript did you have to hand it out to loads of people? Was it quite a difficult pro process? I was really naughty actually with my manuscript because um, because I didn't expect anything to happen. So I'd, I'd done, I dipped in and out of the story for about a year and I just wrote on my commute to work because that's all I had time to do. And then I'd gone so far that I thought, well, I've done all of this, I might as well do something with it. So I took a week off um, work and um, it was a week before my 35th birthday. And I promised myself that I would submit something by the end of that week. So instead of doing the whole manuscript, um, I actually just finessed the first three chapters. And then I had some ideas of how it was going to unfold across the rest. Um, and that's what I submitted because a lot of people just ask for those first three chapters. And I did actually say I'd got a finished manuscript, but I hadn't. I just didn't want to, I almost felt like I didn't want to waste my time in case, you know, I was rubbish and, you know. Um, I, I, I think you'll find, you know, the first 10,000 words plus a, a synopsis of what's going to happen after that. I, yeah. You know, I think if, if this had landed on my desk, and keep in mind, I, I never publish anything because, you know, I'm, I own a bookshop. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I was absolutely transfixed from the start. The whole, mm -hmm. the basis to the storyline is, is fantastic. I'm and, so pleased. I'm so pleased that people are responding to it because when I had the idea, I thought it would be really good fun and I actually really enjoyed imagining all of the different challenges and the characters and what they'd be put through. Yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not a massive reality TV watcher, although I kind of, kind of watch the early days of, of Big Brother and yeah. I've never got into Love Island or anything like that. But uh, yeah. having said that, I do love things like Strictly and, and, and which are all kind of the same sort of thing. I, like yeah, that. I think they're all realities, showing real people and how they respond to things. I, I never used to be a massive fan of reality TV. In fact, you know, years ago, I used to be a bit of a snob about this and I used to think it was just rubbish. But then I sort of slowly got into it and then I became um, a fan. I'm not an obsessive, but you know, just a fan for a, yeah. for a fun escape at the end of the day. So, um, so coming on to the idea, I mean, what, 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 where did that come from? Just the, the idea came from... A conversation with friends after a few wines, as all good ideas do. Um, and we were on holiday in Corsica and we just got the chat, we started chatting about which reality shows would you go on if you were forced to? Like, what are the best, what are the worst? Um, like, if I had to go on a reality show, it probably would be I'm a celeb or something, because I feel like that would be my growth journey. Um, I wouldn't go on Love Island, uh, probably because um, I think it would be quite difficult. I think being on Love Island would be very difficult and it's a very difficult challenge for people. My worst would be naked attraction because I mean <laughs> like I don't know who, could, who has the courage to do that. I'm in awe. But then I started thinking okay well getting naked on TV would be pretty embarrassing and pretty awful but what about being dumped on TV by who you, somebody who you thought was the love of your life? And I thought that would be really quite savage. So um, but then there wasn't a show like that so I made it up. And thus, thus Amy exists. And um, how, how like Amy are you? Or how, yeah, is there any similarity? Is that, I mean, I can see you're yeah. both copywriters. Yes. In a, in a, in a, in a day well, job. 
you know, I'm the world's foremost expert in my own experiences. So I feel most comfortable writing from, from that. Um, I would say she's 75% me. Um, definitely the similarities are some of her insecurities. Um, like we see at the start of the book, you know, her chins and uh, things like that and being worried about eating a donut. Um, and also things like feeling torn between settling down and um, going on more adventures uh, as she approaches 30, which is definitely something that I experienced around that age too. So yeah, I would say Amy, 75 to 80% me. Wow. Okay, that's uh, that's very interesting. I mean, I've, uh, I kind of feel like I know Amy so well. Me so well. The uh, and and the and the character of um, of Jamie, who we all hate. Uh, <laughs> what reality is it? This run? is that a fair question? I don't know. If that is. Jamie is like a horrible Frankenstein of all of my ex boyfriends the worst ex boyfriends I've had, and the worst ex boyfriends of my friends. My husband is completely convinced I based Jamie on him, and that, but it's not true at all. My husband is lovely, um, and uh, but there are a couple of things that Jamie does which um, are slightly reflective of my husband's naughty. So has has your husband moder moderated his behaviour since reading the book? Yeah, I'd say a fraction. <laughs> one of the one of the, one of my favourite parts of the book actually is when Amy um, it speaks about her nostril complex. Um, and that's actually the only part of the book that's true about my husband. <laughs> I've tried many gimmicks to stop my heavy breathing and um, we now go to sleep with the rain app to drown me out. Fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> so we, I mean, I said what we, what we haven't done is actually talk around the, um, the, the actual basis to the story. I'm sure you're used to kind of giving a kind of um, uh, synopsis. Would you be okay just quickly giving a synopsis of what, I, you know, what you're allowed to say without giving anything away? Yeah, sure. Just about the plot line. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Amy believes that her boyfriend is whisking her away on a dream holiday to pop the big question. They've been together for a couple of years. Um, and, uh, it's kind of what all of her friends are doing and she feels like it's her time. Um, but instead of whisking her away on a dream holiday to do that, he dumps her on the set of a brutal new reality show called The Shelf. Um, and on The Shelf, Amy is joined by five other women, also dumped there, and they have to compete against each other in a series of ridiculous and sexist challenges to prove that they um, are worthy of holding down a relationship and that they can, uh, and to be crowned the keeper in the show finale to win a million pounds. But... Instead of um, following what the producers want them to do, the contestants decide to club together and uh, to rewrite the show rules and do it their own way. Very good. Yeah, no, and absolutely brilliant. So you've got um, these six characters um, in 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 the show. Um, there's, 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 I mean, I won't um, go through each of them, but are, are there bases to friends or people you've, you know, you've included in there who are kind of part of your real life? Or is it, are these all an amalgam of people you think should be in there? It's, a, it's more the latter, I would say. It's more an amalgam um, of people who should be on there. I mean, I wrote the characters in mind that I wanted to create a really diverse cast mm -hmm. uh, because I wanted different readers to relate to different characters. Um, as I said um, before, in terms of writing from experience, you know, some of the characters I wasn't able to do huge deep dives on in terms of unearthing their, you know, who, who they are, um, because they aren't really my stories to tell. And the characters that I've written, I suppose my inspiration for them comes from, you know, friends, some friends, yes, but otherwise people in the news, people I've seen on TV, celebrities, people who've told those kind of stories and that I've researched. Very good, very good, and um, it's uh, it's it's intriguing that you've uh, you've included as as well as that people of um, you know the older age, the kind of the, the divorcees of plus uh, fifty plus as well, which I think mm -hmm. you know, it's a it's a credit to this the, to the storyline that you did do that. I was a meaningful um, part of it, I, I suspect. Yes, yeah, including um, Kathy, and that was really intentional. Um, I do have, you know, relatives and, and friends of that age who have experienced things like that. Again, I wanted to make sure that when readers read this book, it could cover all ages, all experiences and all backgrounds. And I really wanted the characters to come from um, different backgrounds, uh, different walks of life. Yeah. 
Yeah. Now, in in the proof, you uh, there's a little personal note at the start where you um, you reference what what you thought was the most humiliating thing that could happen to you uh, at that, that age. Or oh, clearly, I have to say, I can't think of anything more humiliating than um, Naked Attraction. Actually, I just think that is just the most horrendous show. But um, so, you, and and I think your attitudes have changed to what is more humi- the most humiliating thing now. Uh, what would I that think be? So you know, writing the book, and it took me. I would say collectively two, two and a half years. It was actually a learning process for me as well, because at the start of writing, I thought, oh God, being dumped would be really awful. But then as I wrote the story and as I went through Amy's journey and I tapped into my past experiences, I began to sort of learn learn myself that actually being dumped isn't necessarily the worst thing that can happen to you just because actually it's kind of fixing your life because it's obviously not the relationship you were supposed to be in. Mm -hmm. So it made me kind of... um, sort of made me recover from any past heartbreak, heartbreak that I've experienced and things like that. So um, now I wouldn't find being dumped on TV the most embarrassing thing to happen just because of that. Um, uh, naked attraction would be the most embarrassing thing to happen to me on TV. Yeah. Very good. And uh, I do have one exception though. I mean, I think, yeah, I mean you, you do come up with a series of, of red flags, dare I say, um, part way through. Of which one of which, and this is red flags for um, to, to watch out for with uh, with men, if they like Big Bang Theory. I mean, that's a. <laughs> uh, I have to say, I'm a big fan of that. So um, that's I'm a, really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I can only apologise. Um, that that refers to a specific person in my past. I'm afraid that's quite a personal experience. <laughs> oh bless. So have any of um, any of any of the people from your past now read it and been been in touch to say, hang on, I didn't do that or whatever? Um, they haven't yet. Um, whether they will, I, I really hope not. <laughs> but um, a, a cut of, I would say a year and a half ago, um, someone did contact me and said, I, I see you're bringing out this book, and you know, you started to get a bit worried about what might be in it. Um, and I said, don't worry, you'll have to stop being so vain. Not about you. <laughs> oh, fantastic! <laughs> fantastic. Now, I, I, I did also read from your bio that you um, you grew up in um, was it, sorry, was it South Africa or uh, Zimbabwe? Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe, that's right. Yeah. Uh, and, and yet, even having come to the UK at fifteen, you you have no inflection of accents at all. I mean, that's um, impressive. Yeah, it's funny. Um, some people pick up a twang, some people don't. But I think I spent six years in Australia. So I think any, if, if I do have a twang, it's probably that. I suppose when you're 14, um, your accent maybe still hasn't become solid yet. Um, and I also had, had family in the UK and I'd lived in the UK for a couple of years when I was younger, younger. So um, that probably influenced it. But I can't hear myself. I don't know what I sound like. To me, I feel like I've got a really neutral voice. I, I think everyone, I, I, I listen back to these recordings occasionally and think, God, I, I'm what an idiot I sound like. But, so. It's just terrible hearing one's own voice. I think you have a great voice. <laughs> um, so, and I've also read here from the editor that um, you've now, it's now been sold in five countries. I suspect it, 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 more than that now. And uh, also option for a TV series, which is work in progress now. It's already started the script work. Yes, that's right. Amazing. It's very exciting. Yeah, the, t- the territories are, are exciting. They haven't, there are still five territories that's been sold in quite, from quite surprising places. Like, well, it's just been released in France, which is great, um, but also in Taiwan and Hungary, um, some places. <laughs> um, but that, I think that's wonderful. I would, I would love to see it in uh, Taiwanese. Um, the TV script, yes. So it's been optioned by Monumental Pictures, who were behind... Um, Caitlin Moran's How to Build a Girl, which released recently. Um, and that is really exciting. I can't say a lot because I don't know. It's really early stages, but I have seen um, a pilot script, which is great, and um, it's, but it's still being worked on and it's, you know, nothing's for certain yet. Amazing, amazing. And I have, after having watched it, having having watched Naked Attraction, I, 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 I did assume Channel 4 would be in touch and be desperate to... Uh, <laughs> to actually create this as a proper show actually as well which um which uh, well I, yeah it's funny isn't it because you could get the drama version of it and then you could get um the actual show being made like love island and i don't know how i feel about that because i feel like i, I would have created a monster <laughs> yeah true 
Oh, well, gosh, no, it's, it's unthinkable, isn't it, really? But um, <laughs> yeah. um, having said that, it does feel like there's, uh, there's room for a sequel um, by creating new characters, perhaps even uh, changing the gender as well, perhaps. And, yeah, uh, there are a few options that I'm thinking about, you know, nothing set in stone, but uh, I think it would be really interesting to get men on there and reverse, reverse genders to see how they would respond to the same situations. I think getting them to do the same challenges would be a must uh, because that's when you could highlight the differences between how men and women would react. Um, I think spin-offs of the characters would be a really fun uh, thing to explore like what does Amy do afterwards but what do some of the other characters do afterwards like you know some of the stronger more outspoken ones like Jackie and Gemma. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to see where their future takes them. Yes so with that, have you actually got a second book uh, in the planning or? Um, I have a second book. Um, it's called uh, The Couple. That's out in spring 2021, but it's not related to the shelf. It's not a sequel. Um, but uh, I'm in the middle of planning uh, books three and four, so perhaps. Okay. Yeah. Is that, and three and four could include a, a sequel to The Shelf. Then. Could do. Never say never. I'm not, I'm not sure. You're catching me in my early stages of the thinking. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Listen, it's been an absolute joy talking to you. Thank you so much. Um, I have to say, I mean, I, this was the per I have to say the previous book I read um, was called The, the Harpy and, uh, mm -hmm. by Megan Hunter, and which is heavy. Uh, that's really heavy. And I will be interviewing hopefully Megan very soon. This was just the perfect antidote. It's such an easy read and so lovely. Uh, Great. Well, thank um, you. I mean, that was my aim, to make a, a really fun story that uh, gave people an escape, um, and, uh, but still talked about things, in the, things that were serious, but in a really light-hearted way. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time, and, uh, and good luck with uh, all future ventures, and with, obviously, all the book sales with this one. Thank you so much. Massive thanks to Heli for that wonderful interview. It really is a very good book, so I can't uh, recommend it enough. Uh, give us a call on 01442 827653 um, or read the blurb below this video. Uh, we've got so many more interviews um, to post already pre-recorded and a whole load of uh, authors waiting to be interviewed as well. So uh, please do um, subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, we'll see you very soon.